Hello everybody, my name is Drew Jablonowski. I'm here with Garage Gurus. And today we're gonna to be looking at a 2012 Chevy Traverse uh, that has a check engine light on. A customer brought me this car because the check engine light was on. They didn't have any uh, drivability concerns, uh, but the check engine light was bothering them a little bit. So pulled the car in, I went ahead and scanned it uh, using our Altel. And I found that the uh, code on this vehicle was a P0430 for Bank 2 Catalyst Efficiency. So we are going to go through the Walker 5 checks uh, to make sure that the catalytic converter is failed or to make sure that uh, there isn't something causing it to fail. Those five checks are we're going to scan it, pull up our codes, uh, we're going to check for any related TSBs um, or engine control module calibrations. We're going to look for uh, any exhaust leaks uh, before or after the catalytic converter. We're going to make sure uh, that the vehicle is in proper fuel control by looking at our fuel trims and we're going to check to make sure we don't have any misfires and then we're also going to check for contamination uh, from the coolant. So we want to do a pressure check on the coolant system and we're going to go ahead and uh, do a head check as well and then we want to check our oil level to make sure that the oil level isn't too high on there. And then last but not least, we're going to want to make sure that the actual uh, correct size catalytic converter is on this vehicle. So that uh, being said, moving forward, uh, we're going to go ahead and start by looking at some, uh, some data, some live data on here. And I'll go ahead and get the vehicle started and we'll uh, start with checking out for our fuel control and uh, oxygen sensors. All right, guys, we went ahead and started the vehicle up and we went ahead and we looked at our ECU information to make sure that we were at the current calibration. We went ahead and used our service information and checked for uh, TSBs or recalls for this P0430. Finding none, uh, we're going to go ahead and dive into some live data now. So I'm going to go ahead and click on live data. We're going to start with our fuel trims. Click on fuel trims and when we're looking at our fuel trims, this is going to be um, to check our short term and long term uh, fuel trims to make sure that we're in proper fuel control. We want to see a combined uh, percentage of plus or minus 10% on bank 2 because our P0430 is for our bank 2 catalyst. All right, And right here we can see our long term fuel trim on bank 2 is running at 9 but our short term fuel trim on bank 2 is running at negative 5 to negative 9. It's bouncing around. The longer this vehicle runs it will end up pulling those long term fuel trims down closer to zero. So all in all, I don't really see any issues with where the fuel control is at this time on that bank two. Now what I'm also going to look at while I'm here is our oxygen sensors. I want to see what our bank two oxygen sensors are doing. So we're going to go ahead and highlight uh, bank two sensor one and bank two sensor two. We're going to bring them uh, to the top and then we're going to go ahead and graph them. And I want to see what they look like. Um, on a graph because just looking at the general PID data doesn't really tell me what's going on. It doesn't give me a full story. We want to make sure we're looking at the entire graph over a period of time. We're going to zoom in a little bit on them here. And so we can see right here that our Bank 2 Sensor 2, um, it is basically running pretty lean here um, under 318 uh, millivolts and it pops up a little bit over 600. Normally, we would like to see our downstream oxygen sensor running at around 625 to 725 millivolts on a steady, uh, constant line there. Our upstream oxygen sensor is moving up and down uh, under 100 millivolts, and it looks like north of 800 millivolts there. So the upstream oxygen sensor does seem to be working properly. Uh, the downstream reading, we can see we just went up to about 650 there, but it's, it's went back down lean. It is trying to, to mimic this upstream oxygen sensor. Normally, when we see a downstream oxygen sensor mimic an upstream oxygen sensor, our first thought is, oh no, the catalytic converter is bad. But we're going to go through those uh, five checks. We already made sure that our ECU is up to calibration. We already made sure that we were in proper fuel control. I'm going to actually add on misfires now to that fuel control just to make sure we don't have any current misfires um, or any history misfires. So I'm going to back out of this screen. I'm going to scroll over. We're going to go to our misfire information. 
Now what we're going to be looking at is our current misfires. We can see current cylinder 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. This is a 3.6 V6. So all of these cylinders, we are showing zero misfires. Now I'm going to scroll down here and let's see what the history says. Our history from cylinder 1 through cylinder 6 shows zero misfires. Now I know these are counting misfires because I can see my cycles of misfire data. It is counting from 0 to 99, which makes me know that the, uh, the misfires are currently counting. So at this per current point in time, um, I see no issues with the uh, calibration of the control module. I see no issues with uh, fuel control um, misfires. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, shut the vehicle off. We're going to check the oil level um, and we're going to go check the coolant. We're going to pressure test the, the radiator and we're going to do a block test on this vehicle just to make sure that there's no um, issues with the converter being contaminated. All right, everybody, so we went ahead and shut the vehicle off, and now we're going to go ahead and check the oil level. We want to make sure that the oil level is at the right height, that it's not uh, too low because it's burning oil, or that it's not overfilled. Then the next thing we're going to do after that is we're going to pressure test the cooling system um, on this vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and pull the dipstick right now. I'm going to clean it off one time, put it back in there. And we're going to go ahead and check the oil level. And the oil level looks to be uh, right there uh, at the, the max line. So it looks, looks good. Now to get to the, uh, the coolant cap, it's actually sitting underneath this front cover here. So we're going to go ahead and remove this front cover to gain access so we can put our coolant pressure test on there. All right, everybody, now that we went ahead and got the under hood plastic cover off, we're going to go ahead and uh, check the coolant uh, with a pressure tester. And we want to make sure that the vehicle is, uh, is cold um, so there, the pressure has gone down in here and we don't you know, accidentally burns our, burn ourselves. So I can actually uh, check the, the upper hose here, uh, squeeze it a little bit, make sure that it's not under pressure and make sure that it's not hot. And we also have had the vehicle um, off for a substantial amount of time now. So we're going to still use a rag just for safety. We're going to cover over uh, the uh, radiator cap here and we're going to turn it, applying pressure to it. So in case there's any pressure, we can bleed it off into the reservoir here. And there's no pressure on it. So now we're going to go ahead and look and we can see that our radiator cap is uh, a 15 PSI cap. So we're going to get our coolant pressure tester out and we're going to pump up the uh, cooling system to 15 PSI. And there you can see, we got the cooling system pumped up to 15 PSI. We're gonna go ahead and set this down and we'll come back to this in 15 minutes and check it to make sure that we don't have any leaks. All right, so we've come back 15 minutes later and we checked our gauge and we saw that it was still sitting at 15 PSI, which is gonna tell us that we don't have any external or internal leaks. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and depressurize this and uh, we'll move on to our, our next step of a visual inspection um, of the exhaust for, for leaks or damage. All right, everybody, now that we went ahead and completed checking the uh, oil to make sure their level is proper and check the uh, coolant uh, to make sure that it's holding um, and not can, uh, leaking internally, uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about catalytic converters and how they actually function and what we're looking at with them. So we're going to go over what this catalytic converter does. It was uh, donated uh, to us by, uh, by Walker Exhaust. And we always want to discuss 
that catalytic converters actually don't fail on their own. Right? There's actually something that causes a catalytic converter to fail, and that's why we're going over these five steps. All right? So maybe it's a calibration of the engine control module. Maybe we're running uh, with too much fuel, too much hydrocarbons, or we're running too lean. All right? Or maybe there's something that has damaged this catalytic converter, like it's been hit or something along those lines. So what we have here with this catalytic converter, you can open it up, it's a cutaway. We can see that we have uh, a three-way catalyst, and these are the substrates that are in here. These substrates are actually made up of uh, palladium, uh, rhodium, and platinum. They take these honeycomb, they dip it in those chemicals. All this does is this stores oxygen. It's a giant oxygen storage container is what it does. These get up to temperature roughly around 600 degrees and they create a chemical reaction inside the catalytic converter. So in one end we have our exhaust coming in, so our hydrocarbons, our carbon monoxide, and our NOx. The substrate inside here oxidizes those um, gases and then we get friendly, environmentally friendly gases coming out the back, which would be dinitrogen, uh, H2O, and uh, carbon uh, dioxide. And if we have a coolant contamination or we get oil burning in here, it can coat this material so that it can't, uh, it can't have the, the chemical reaction with those gases. Or if we have too much hydrocarbons in here, or it's running too lean, you know, we can't light the, uh, the actual uh, substrate off. So that is how uh, a brief overview of how a catalytic converter works and uh, how they technically, uh, they don't actually fail on their own. There's something else that causes the converter to fail, and that's why we're going through uh, the five checks. So now we're gonna go ahead and lift uh, this vehicle up, and we're gonna make a, uh, a visual inspection of the catalytic converter to make sure there's no uh, damage to it. And then we're gonna check our exhaust uh, to make sure that there's no leaks and that everything is uh, connected and flowing the way it should be um, at this time. All right, guys, now we've got the, uh, the Chevy Traverse in the air. We're gonna go ahead and go over our visual checks now. So what we wanna do is we want to visually look at the catalytic converter, make sure that it isn't damaged at all from any kind of road debris um, or possibly any kind of accidents that may have occurred. Uh, we also wanna check for discoloration of the catalytic converter. We wanna make sure that it hasn't overheated um, at all, which would cause damage to the substrate. While we're under there, we're gonna take a look at the exhaust pipe um, as well. Make sure there aren't any exhaust leaks. And we're gonna look at the oxygen sensors to make sure that those haven't been damaged. When we're looking at the uh, exhaust, we are looking for any kind of exhaust leak before or after the downstream oxygen sensor. All right, now the reason for that is we could get a small pinhole leak in our exhaust and it can actually cause a venturi effect with the fresh air. So what's happening, guys, is the exhaust is coming down the pipe. It's gonna rush over that pinhole leak, draw fresh air into the pipe, but now we know that the exhaust doesn't just come straight out the engine and straight out of the car. It actually just keeps cycling forward and backward as the, as the valves are, are opening. You know, I'm a little two steps forward, one step back, basically. And so now when we draw that fresh air in, we can actually be pulling that fresh air in uh, over the downstream oxygen sensor, which could be giving us some false readings. Well, currently we're gonna, we're gonna hop under here right now and we're gonna take a look at the catalytic converter take a look at the oxygen sensors and the pipes, and uh, hopefully that'll, that'll help pinpoint whether we've got uh, any kind of metering or exhaust leak issues, or we can look at a failed converter. So let's go. All right, guys, now we're underneath the, uh, the vehicle here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, look at the catalytic converter, which we can see this is the bank two catalytic converter right here, and right behind it is the bank two downstream oxygen sensor. I already looked at the um, exhaust manifold and the upstream oxygen sensor uh, to make sure there was no damage to them. But we're looking at these to make sure there's no discoloration, uh, there's no dents, dings, or any kind of damage that could have happened to them. And all in all, it all looks fine. So at this point in time, would we want to replace the catalytic converter? Well, there's probably one more step we can take, all right? And just because I can't hear or see that exhaust leak doesn't mean it's not there. Like I said, it could be a pinhole exhaust leak that's drawing air in. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my exhaust, uh, or excuse me, hook up my smoke machine and take a, um, 
take a look and see if we see any smoke coming out of the exhaust. All right guys, so we went ahead and we, we smoked the um, exhaust and it took a couple of minutes for the smoke to make its way from the back to the front. But we can see right here at our flex pipe that we do actually have a small pinhole leak there. Uh, we can see that the smoke is coming out. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and replace uh, the entire white pipe with a uh, Walker direct fit um, exhaust pipe, white pipe, and uh, we'll uh, retest our data afterwards, check our oxygen sensors, make sure we're getting the proper readings, and uh, we should have fixed the 430 code at that point in time. All right, everyone. So we went ahead and uh, replaced the uh, white pipe here um, with a brand new white pipe, fixing that exhaust leak that we picked up during the, uh, the five checks that we were doing. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, lower the vehicle down and we're gonna check our oxygen sensor data on bank two, uh, sensor one and bank two sensor two. Uh, hopefully that will uh, resolve our P0430 code uh, with proper readings and then we will uh, clear the codes, take this vehicle for a drive and uh, be able to deliver it back to the customer. All right, we lowered the vehicle down. We went ahead and started it. I went in and pulled up some oxygen sensor data here. We're looking at both banks, bank one and bank two. I'm using that to uh, both banks to compare themselves to each other. In bank one, you can see on the upstream oxygen sensor is cycling less than 100 millivolts and uh, north of 800, and so is the uh, bank two sensor one. Now we look at bank two sensor two, we can see that these are holding steady in that 650 to 750 millivolt range which is on the slightly rich side, which is what we want to see downstream of the catalytic converter. So I can say by utilizing the Walker five checks that I was able to diagnose this P0430 code as a uh, exhaust leak in the Y pipe uh, downstream of the bank two oxygen sensor and that my catalytic converter is actually working fine and there was no converter efficiency issues at all. Wanted to say thank you for, uh, for watching uh, the Garage Gurus Tech Tip today. For any more Garage Gurus Tech Tips, please feel free to log in and check us out on garageguru.tech. And if you have any more questions about the Walker 5 checks, you can go to walkerexhaust.com. My name is Drew Jablonowski. Thanks for tuning in today.